Good evening and welcome to chapel. I remember watching the senior sermons back in 2020 when I first started at Eden and thinking I will never do that, even if it means I don't graduate. <laughs> Yet somehow here I am, thanks Dr. Grundy, and I'm honored to be here, if not also slightly terrified. I'm told that this may be the first online senior sermon since Eden went back to in-person chapel. As much as I would have loved to have been there in person today, leave it to me, having grown up the only Christian from an atheist and agnostic household to continue to do things my own way. Thank you for being here tonight, whether in person or online. A big thanks to the whole team. A lot of hands went into this. I hope that you each find something that you are looking for tonight, even if you didn't know you needed it, whether it be fellowship, delicious food, inspiration, or just the feeling of the Holy Spirit. I hope you find it tonight, and I'm glad you are here. Even we have been reminded, encouraged, and empowered to believe and act in a way that sees, hears, and values all people, no matter who they are or where they come from. Today, we will hear about the unnamed woman and who Jesus calls us to remember. As we remember and celebrate her, we also remember the indigenous people of the lands that we are on today. Eden Seminary gathers today, acknowledging that our campus sits upon the traditional territories of the Osage, Kwapa, Ocheri Shawin, Paskaskia, Kikapu, and other tribes. Gail and I come today to you on the traditional territories of the Massachusetts, Pawtucket, Agawam, and Namakig tribes. We honor their sometimes forgotten but always enduring presence and ongoing contributions to this land. We invite you to add tribe names where you are this evening in the chat. We invite you now to light the candles at your tables or where you are in ho at your home. And we sing as we sing our opening song, I Am Not Forgotten. We're gonna need your help on this song. We're gonna get to a section where it says, light over darkness, strength over weakness, joy over sadness. And we're just gonna, you're gonna repeat that after me. Let's try that. Light over darkness, strength over weakness, Joy over sadness, God knows my name. All right, let's, let's give it a try. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. Light over darkness. Strength over weakness. Strength. Joy over sadness. God knows my name. Father to the fatherless. Friend to the friendless. Hope to the hopeless. God knows my name. Let's try it again. Light over darkness, strength over weakness, joy over sadness. God knows my name. Father to the fatherless, friend to the friendless, hope for the hopeless. God knows my name. I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, God knows my name, I am not forgotten, 
I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. Light over darkness. French to the weakness. <laughs> Joy over sadness. God knows my name. Father to the fatherless. Friend to the friendless. Hope for the hopeless. God knows my name. Let's say it again. Light over darkness. Strength over weakness. Joy over sadness. God knows my name. Father to the fatherless. Friend to the friendless. Hope to the hopeless. God knows my name. I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, God knows my name. I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, God knows my name. Good job. As we share our meal blessing, I invite you to gather around the table. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Loving and gracious God, we come before you today with grateful hearts and we give thanks for the blessing of this day and for this time together. We give thanks for the food that is before us and we do not take these gifts for granted, as we are mindful of those who do not have enough to eat or a table on which to eat. Forgive us for not always remembering those who pray for any food at all when we have an abundance before us. We ask that you bless the food in the chapel and the food in our Zoom spaces, as well as the hands that have prepared it. We also ask for your blessings upon the hands of each of those people that had a part in getting this food from its origins to this table. May it nourish us and strengthen us for the work that you are calling us to do. And may it fill us with your love, your grace, and may we share your goodness with all of your children. Amen. We're going to bid the, the Zoom folks farewell as they head off into a, a breakout room. Uh, and those of us who are here are going to step up and eat. Uh, since we have changed uh, food service, uh, Lori actually does a lot more of the setting up uh, than before. So we're grateful to Lori for getting things set up. Lori, do you want to tell us about tonight's meal? Tonight's meal is from Turn Restaurant. It's downtown, I think, on Locust. So tonight we have grilled chicken, uh, grilled salmon, I say salmon, don't worry about it, uh, <laughs> roasted potatoes, ah, that's hot, um, green beans, rolls, you got butter for rolls, uh, there is a garden salad, it's a fancy one too, it has craisins, and for the vegetarians, uh, acorn squash stuffed with quinoa and veggies. All right, line up right here, let's eat.
Welcome back, friends. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 6 through 13. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in my memory, uh, in memory of her. This ends our gospel reading. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As we prepare to enter into Holy Week, Many of us will be recognizing the Last Supper, but there's another important supper that doesn't get as much attention. It's the supper we see in today's scripture, and it comes just a few verses before the Last Supper. So often when we celebrate communion, we think or even quote Jesus saying, do this in remembrance of me. But today's scripture ends with in memory of her, her. Who is she and what are we doing in her memory? I will admit that despite how many times I have heard and read this scripture, that last line never really stuck. I knew there was an unnamed woman, an anointing, and a question about the wastefulness of the perfume used to anoint. But that unnamed woman, I never really thought much about her importance. I, after all, believed as a child that the Bible was a book written by men and for men, and I should not expect to see stories that centered people that might resemble me. But the absence of the evidence of women in the story is not evidence of the absence of women. Just because the women aren't always centered doesn't mean they weren't there. And if they aren't traditionally centered in the story, it doesn't mean that we can't center them. What if instead of forgetting about this woman, what if we center and even celebrate her? What can we learn from her? There was in fact some reason that Jesus told us to remember her. Jesus calls it a beautiful thing that she did. This woman's anointing with an expensive perfume shows a sacrificial divine kind of love, a love of compassion and extravagance that didn't give the bare minimum, but instead may have given all that she had to show her love and devotion to Jesus. We are told in Matthew that the perfume could have been sold for much money. A similar story is told in all four Gospels, and while there seems to be some debate about whether they're all talking about the same dinner, I invite you to imagine with me that they are telling different parts of the same story about the same woman. Mark tells a very similar version of Matthew's telling with a few extra details, like what type of perfume or ointment and how much was it worth. John's Gospel tells us, tells us that this perfume was worth a year's wages. And Luke tells us that the woman is a sinner. A year's wage is a significant sum. The woman likely didn't use this perfume on Jesus because it was something she could easily and comfortably give. And as a sinner, she likely wasn't invited to that dinner at all. But she still took a risk and showed up for him when others were turning against him. And she gave him something so precious possibly the most precious thing she had, and she gave it to Jesus because she loved him. Common sense tells us that a year's salary worth of something like this is wasteful, that the value of this perfume could have been better spent. Common sense tells us not to go somewhere we aren't welcome, 
like a dinner to which we weren't invited. But common sense doesn't equal love. And following God doesn't always line up perfectly with common sense. There are times when only an extravagant, generous love and a whole lot of faith can meet the demands of our calls. I recently made a new friend named Santos. He gave me a gift of extravagance and generosity recently, a gift that to me defied common sense. Just as I'd forgotten the importance of the woman in today's scripture, Santos is part of a community that is often forgotten. As part of Dr. Leslie's homelessness and poverty class, we are asked to participate in various fieldwork activities with the unhoused community. I recently found myself amidst a congregation of homeless folks doing art together. This is where I met Santos. Santos doesn't actually identify as homeless, but he bounces around between shelters. When I met him, he was not painting like everyone else was at our table. He was just sitting, drinking his coffee. So I asked him if he didn't like to paint, and he shared with me that he preferred crafts. I too prefer crafts to my limited artistic ability, so I asked Santos to tell me more. I learned that he does wood crafting and makes things out of, ready for this, bamboo coffee stirrers. He then sells his creations on the street, and this is his main source of income. He explained to me how to make a fruit basket, telling me which glue is best and showing me how to lay out the coffee stirrers. Santos told me he'd give me homework to start my own basket. He said I could bring it back. And if I made a beautiful basket, he would give me a score of 10 out of 10. And then we could move on to a windmill, a lighthouse, a lantern, and eventually a decorative tricycle. He then proceeded to offer me a pile of these valuable coffee stirrers. At first I refused to take them. My common sense was kicking in. This was this man's main source of income. I could easily buy my own coffee stirrers. So I told Santos, I can't take these from you. These are yours. He told me he would get more. I told him again that I could get my own and I did not need to take his. He then asked me where I would get them. And when I said I wasn't sure, he asked, well, how are you gonna buy them if you don't know where to look? He insisted I take what he was offering. And despite my common sense and my reservations, about taking one of the most precious things he owned. His enthusiasm for sharing his craft with me was contagious. And I did end up taking a small pile of coffee stirrers home with me. I quickly ordered a box to bring with me the next time I am with this congregation in hopes I might see Santos again. Because you see where my common sense got in the way, Santos showed love and generosity love and kindness towards someone he had just met. But there was also a sacrifice in his willingness to share these coffee stirrers with me. And there was a lesson there for me, a lesson that destroyed my preconceived judgment about who in that room was capable of giving, who was capable of showing love, and who was capable of ministering to others. All of that in the short time I spent with a generous and loving stranger. Santos had the opportunity to do a beautiful thing for me and he did not hesitate. Just as the unnamed woman didn't hesitate when she had the opportunity to do a beautiful thing for Jesus. There are some things that we can do in the future, like taking a trip, preaching a sermon, or getting another degree. There are others like this woman anointing Jesus it can only be done once, and the opportunity will never again present itself. I wonder how many of us have missed the opportunity to do a beautiful thing. The effects of this beautiful thing that this woman did, that has lasted forever. And you know what makes this beautiful thing even more powerful? Think back to what was happening to Jesus during this time. It was a time of such betrayal, of bitterness and tragedy, and yet Jesus asks us to remember her. In the scriptures right before this story, 
The priests and elders are plotting to arrest Jesus. And in the scripture, immediately following is when Judas agrees to betray him. We know about them, all about the men. And yet it is the woman, the sinful woman without a name, who is a light amidst the darkness, who takes a risk, who shows an extravagant love when everyone else is turning away. And she is the one that we are literally called to remember. Jesus asks us to remember this good thing, this beautiful thing that this woman did. Jesus is asking us to find the light in a world that is often filled with darkness. This woman, despite not knowing her name, left us with the memory of a beautiful deed. Rather than forgetting and ignoring people like the unnamed woman and people like Santos who live differently from some of us, let's not only seek out their stories, let's not only remember them and their beautiful deeds, but let's celebrate them and learn from them. Let's strive to embody the divine love of extravagance that they have shown. The love that Jesus literally calls us to remember when he calls us to tell the story in remembrance of her. And then once we remember and celebrate them, may we leave memories of beautiful deeds wherever we go, just as that unnamed woman did so many years ago. Amen. Before our final song and final blessing, let us celebrate the woman in today's story with our own anointing. This might feel new and different, like it is probably, like it probably did for the women in Bethany. In a moment, those of us on Zoom will go to a breakout room for a virtual anointing. For those of you who are in the chapel space, you will have the opportunity to be anointed by Dr. Kapp and Kelsey. We can encourage you to join as you feel comfortable coming forward when you see an opening so that you too can feel that sense of anointing. Let us join briefly in a prayer before we separate. Oh, Holy One, we give thanks for your word and your love that teaches us every day. We give special thanks today for the anointing women who did a beautiful thing for Jesus. Let everyone that is in, has anointing oil touch today, be filled with the Holy Spirit and fill our hearts with your unconditional love. Help us live our lives in remembrance of Jesus and in remembrance of the anointing woman. Wrap us in your warm embrace and guide us to continuously find ways to do beautiful things in your name. Amen.
few years ago, I was at a conference annual gathering in Columbia, Missouri, and this song spoke to my heart. And while planning this chapel with Gail, we thought this would be a beautiful song to minister to the people. Once you get the, the melody of it, feel free to sing along. In the midst of pain, I choose love. In the midst of pain, I choose love. In the midst of pain, sorrow falling down like I await the sun again. I choose love. I choose love. In the midst of a war, I choose peace. In the midst of a war, I choose peace, peace. In the midst of war, hate and anger keeping score, I will seek the good once more. I choose peace, I choose peace. My world falls down, I will rise. When my world falls down, I will rise. When my world falls down, explanations can't be found. I will climb to holy ground, I will rise. I will rise In the midst of pain I choose love In the midst of pain I choose love Love In the midst of pain Sorrow falling down like rain, I await the sun again. I choose love, I choose love, I choose love, I choose love. Beloveds, may we go now from wherever we may be, finding ways to do beautiful things in the name of Jesus and always in remembrance of her and her extravagant love and generosity. Amen. was awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Karen. You. It was so good to hear your voice in chapel again. That was fantastic. Thanks to Thank everybody you. who came to visit.
I love the visitors today. That was awesome. <laughs> Nicole, so nice to have you back. Say hello to the We'll family. be there for convocation. Okay. Sounds good. Fantastic. So glad you said yes, Gail. I'm glad you made and, me feel like I could say yes. And the anointing part here totally worked. Oh, yay. It was great. It was cool. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, time for me to go to class. Same. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. You're awesome. <laughs>